NTA political leader Gary Griffith with us. A pleasant good evening, sir. Hi, good evening. My, my apologies. I was just on the 11th hole playing golf with Keith in Barbados still, so uh, well, sorry about that. I understand that has the, that will, you know, take up a lot of your time. You know, in one of your releases uh, recently, you said the resounding success of the UNC NTA alliance paves the way for future triumph in the upcoming general elections. Uh, what I thought was interesting is that you didn't just say it and, and said that was it. You actually highlighted the fact that there were some negative comments aimed at this alliance following the, the local government elections. And you said it fell into two distinct categories. One comprises those who are likely to go down the pecking order based on the quality persons the NTA will bring to the table to join with UNC as they prefer to be big fish in small ponds in opposition. And the other includes those who are overtly or covertly support the PNM, the People's National Movement, whether as part of the PNM A team or PNM B team. I mean, very strong words. Expand on that, please. Yeah, sure. Um, good, good evening to all. I, I, it's straightforward. We recall the same time um, Basio Pani had a uh, similar situation in 2000, when it was the only time the UNC ever won on its own. Basio Pani was trying to embrace that third constituency without having other political parties around. And he was able to be successful. However, because he expanded the base to such an, an enormous extent, certain persons felt slighted. They felt um, that, listen, well, you know, you're now pulling me down the pecking order by bringing in that third constituency of individuals, and it caused the government to collapse. So you will always have that situation uh, when it is that you, you're going to bring in other persons because people, some people prefer to be the Christian small pawn. So there would be certain elements. You, you, you would have heard a certain attorney um, who, who was supposed to be a UNC, and all he's doing is, is attacking the NT, and he's supposed to be a I wouldn't call him search name. Uh, so you, you, you're going to get people who have that and you'll say, look, I would prefer to be big fish in small pond. If Gary comes in, Gary might be bringing persons of the ability that would that Kamala Prasad Sessor and him would want to embrace to have a powerful cabinet, a powerful government. And they prefer to be down the pecking order in the hope that the UNC could scrape a 21-20. And, and that, that is very unfortunate. I, am, I will continue to have dialogue with these individuals to show them the bigger picture. But then there's the other group of individuals who are literally mortified. They are mortified based on the results because they have seen that it, it sets the, the template towards the general election. So you would recall, I, I said it constantly, that that PNMB team with Philip Alexander, they knew that, I mean, they, they, they are totally irrelevant, but, but nobody spent time trying to explain to the country, listen, even if they get 100 votes in a seat, that is all they are planning to. They get 100 votes, PNM will get, we well, could win by 20 or 30, and they would have done their job. So said, so done. I think the UNC would have lost about four seats because of the PP. So the PP is the most irrelevant party in politics. They got 5,000 votes out of 1.4 million people. And those 5,000 votes are just persons who are just disenchanted and they just don't want to vote for the PNM or UNC or part of the UNC, and which is unfortunate. And exactly what they, what they plan to do is what they did. So those individuals now will be very concerned because they do not want that third party, a third party joining with the UNC will always spell defeat for the PNM. Yeah. So the results that you would have seen would have shown that 190,000 votes to 130, that's 60,000 vote difference. This was a 30% voter turnout. So in a general election, it's 60%. So you multiply vote by two. In fact, you will get more support for the UNC NT alliance because that is where, you know, the third constituency, not the Die hard base support of the PNM and UNC will come out. Apart from them coming out now, that third constituency of that 150,000, that's when they really step up for the general election. So you multiply PNM's 130 by 2, you multiply the UNC and the NTA's 190 by 2, you will get 260 to, to, um, to 380. And then what does that mean? 120,000 difference. Guess how much the People's Partnership won by in 2010? 120,000. So it sets the pattern. It is, it is going exactly a, a, as planned. And that is why when they saw the numbers, they're not trying to fool the country with a 7-7. That was, that was PNM setting up a, a system that 0.14, when you add all the votes in the six seats in 0.14, it comes up to probably one and a half seats that UNC would have won in Princess Town or Cooper. So really and truly, when you take that, those corporations are supposed to be more like 19 corporations. Yeah. And with that, when you, when you break it down, it would have really been something like, 12, 7 or something along that line. So, or but, but, but Gary, let, let me interject here because you, you also in this release you said 
those individuals who are driven by self-interest and greed. The individuals in question are either fearful of losing their modest positions or concerned that the small benefits they receive will cease. Now, now based on what took place with the electorate, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And there definitely needs to be some new dynamics. Perhaps there needs to be some new conversations. But what about those who are looking in and saying, listen, these people who are driven by greed and self-interest, I have a problem when it comes to trusting them because on one hand, they're telling me, listen, we need to unite and get rid of this political blight, this political evil. But are they willing to go the distance? Are they willing to say, listen, forget about my little kakada, forget about me having to carve out a niche. I really and truly want what is best for Trinidad and Tobago, and I am going to put my best forward with the hope of achieving it, and not because I have some special interest in this. Well, you know, that, that is, is the ideal world. Uh, in, in what it was, in 2010, Led by Kamala Kusar, the sister, you got almost 400,000 persons that's the, that's the UNC and the COP, MSJ, TOP, and Jack Woods combining. This time around, you see that 190 per 30%, so as I said, a 60% plus, you're going to get back with 400,000 again. You're not going to get 400,000 people thinking the same. You're going to, every time there's anything like an alliance, unification, there will always be some persons that may see themselves going down the pecking order. And, and that is unfortunate, but, but that is light. It is for us to be able to explain to those people, think of the bigger picture, think of what is better for the country. And that, that has always been the issue. If everybody fights and say, I want to be political leader, I want to be prime minister, I want to be in cabinet, I want a state board position, where would we go? It cannot work that way. I mean, I right now, I, I feel I, um, my heart goes out to Kamala Prasad, the sister. A typical example is this stupid uh, system we have that if you have uh, 16 seats in Tudapuna, you must put on the name of 16 aldermen, even though only four aldermen could be selected in every corporation. But you do, by you putting on 16 names, you make 16 people feel that I am I should be the person to be selected. So if you can see, could only get one or two aldermen, you're speaking about 14 odd persons being disappointed. They get disappointed, they start to retaliate, they start... We, so all the persons who have not been selected as all of them, you need to calm down. You cannot be in a situation where every single time you want to feel like I could jump ship to the PNM because I get a little thing in my back pocket or because I feel like I deserve a position rather than somebody else. People just need to calm down and look at the bigger picture. So I would like to use that message. So the individuals who are attacking the NT or even the UNC because of what we have achieved, because of the success, all they're seeing is what's in it for me. This is going to affect me. Think of the bigger picture. This country cannot continue with the PNM as it is. We have 16 murders in the last 72 odd hours. And not a word from the minister, the prime minister of Gulf, not a word from the minister of national insecurity, not a word from the commissioner of police, who right now I heard she's disbanding many of the logistical and financial and administrative units to have them out in divisions, which is going to cripple the police service because now the divisions will be out there with numbers, but they will be cosmetic because with all the operational rare echelon support elements, they can't operate effectively. So they'll just be cosmetic. That's a story by itself. If that 130,000 who voted for the PNM wants that, fine. And you'll probably get two times that amount. But you have to look at the 400,000 that are going to vote for the UNC and T alliance in the next general election. You need to be part of the team. It's either, it's either you leave, follow, or get out of the way. Yeah, and one of the things you also mentioned, and you're quite right, and I mean, when you look at it, so many murders in such a short space of time, uh, and as if we become immune to that. Now, you said that while there's value in advising citizens on how to protect themselves, the role of the TTPS is not to tell persons to get security cameras, build safe rooms, and now go to the banks with guards when carrying large sums of money, as this can eventually lead to citizens being blamed when they become victims of crime, as well as it demotivates officers as it takes away the relevance of the police service to the public. I wonder if certain people in authority understand that when they speak, it creates a, a social political domino effect. Now you're telling, for example, there was no economic lifeline for businessmen or businesswomen, especially uh, small and medium businesses. Now you're saying that someone will have to hire guards to go to the bank. 
Now, this is compounded with the fact that the average business in Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Griffith, pays corporate tax, they pay VAT, they pay some green levy fund, they pay NIS according to how many workers, they have to pay labor, all the overhead costs that comes with that, and then compounded now that they have to find personal or yeah, security guards to go to the bank. I mean, where are we going with all of this? I mean, it seems that not only are we not a business-friendly society because we don't have a business-friendly government, but people are making some very loose and reckless statements without understanding the value and the power of these pronouncements. Where are we going? Well, we're going nowhere fast. And again, to the 130,000 persons that prefer to say, listen, I do not care if it affects my, it, it increases the chances of my daughter being raped, my son being kidnapped, my wife being killed, my assets being taken, people could jump over my home. When the PLM, the, the probability increases drastically. It has been seen. It is a fact. And people could still say, I rather still vote for the PLM. It means you really do not care indirectly about your family, about your assets, about your life. And, and therein lies the problem. The, this, the comments being made by the hierarchy of the police is because they, of their, they, they do not know what to do. It is not by chance, um, Trinidad and Tobago, that when Gary Duffet placed first in 2018, defeating 60 other persons in the hierarchy of the police service, inclusive of the Commissioner of Audio Messages, Watchman, and he's still threatening and having a tobacco over this. It was beca because the hierarchy <coughs> did not have that ability to understand um, the concept of law enforcement in the 21st century, 21st century policing, predictive policing, using tactics, technology, being able to inspire, motivate, um, build the morale, build public tr confidence and trust. It's not just about, hey, well, you, uh, you must be a, a police officer for 30 years to be a commissioner. The Jamaican, uh, in Jamaica right now, the commissioner of police was a previous uh, lieutenant colonel in the Jamaican Defense Force. The point being is that they don't know what to do. So what they have done is, look, we don't know what to do, so what we, our job now is to destroy the legacy of Gary Gifford. You're not doing me anything, brothers. When it is that Ulla and company, when you shut down this monthly the National Operations Center, the Operational Command Center, the Commissioner's Command Center, the Emergency Response Patrol, GPS tracking, um, uh, gender-based violence unit, the social media monitoring unit, the covert operative unit, the special operation response team, the E999. When you shut down and dismantle everything I did, all that you are doing is showing how petty you are because you're working and taking directives from political leaders. And then you're not replacing it with anything. And then when you do that, what you do now is look, we are, we are failing, we do not know what to do, so let's just become security consultants to tell the public, this is what you must do to protect yourself because we indirectly can't protect you anymore. So put in more security cameras, hire bodyguards to walk with you when you go to the bank. What kind of madness is this? This is not a banana republic. With the country, the taxpayers pay $2,000 million per annum to maintain the police service. They expect in return, it's not saying that every single citizen must have a police officer by them, but look at what happened just two years ago. The country felt safer. There was a degree of trust and confidence in the police service. The hierarchy has dismantled this to the point now that they have become security consultants. And all of this is because one man and one man alone decided to interfere with an independent process. And that is where 130,000 people said, we don't care. We don't, whether it is it affects our lives, whether it is it could cause our family to be killed, we pay them till we dead. Thankfully, 190,000 saw the bigger picture. And when you double that, Come general election, that is why the PNM will be defeated by 120,000 votes again. And that 120,000 votes turns into the marginal seats turning across into the UNC and T alliance. Yeah, but, 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 but Gary, no matter how we look at it, I mean, 13 murders between last Friday and Sunday, and not a word from anyone in authority. We're still hearing from the Minister of National Security that he believes that certain people are exploiting uh, legal licensed firearms. That for some reason, yes. but, but, but when you look at it, how are people being gunned yes. with what guns? Yeah, well, because the man is a blatant liar. He's still going on the road of legal firearms. You, you manipulated the police to hire, to put 70 police officers to work 24-7 for the last two years in the hope that you could find something to the point that, that the police were involved in being directed by a government official, because as again I tell you, you notice, the government can't take legal action on me. 
The government is lying to the country. The only way that those police officers could have gone to Barbados to abduct a Trinidad citizen illegally was based on government authorization. I was the Minister of National Security. So therein lies the problem. They, they do not have a clue, and then they lie. So for two years, you, you hire civilians who have no authority or qualification in that type of investigation. You spend two years, you bring a judge that brings fake reports with lies, and two years later, since I left, not more, we are out of 1.4 million citizens, 7,000 police officers, um, 5,000 persons who acquired firearms, and 55 odd persons firearm guide dealers. Not one of these people have been arrested for bribery or corruption as it pertains to the issue of legal firearms under my watch through those reports. That shows this government they are liars. This is the same thing they did with email gate, and 130,000 people could still vote for something like that. And, and that, that is very unfortunate. But again, that's when people are so blinded by politics. You want, some of those people still voted for Eric Williams, why do we? They can't help it. And that is their right. But as I said, thankfully, good sense has prevailed in the local government election. Why it is that, so they, that they were defeated by 30% more votes? And you know, people keep saying, oh, it was 7-7. Seven, seven. The same PNM were using the number of seats to say that they won in 2019. Well, use the seats now. The UNC and the Alliance got more seats than you. And they got 60,000 more votes than you. So as much as you could hope that you could, and again, that is why they will always show the race card, so you hope that you could solidify your race. And, but that race base in Beaton did not work. Because people have seen what is happening. You have lied to the country. You continue to lie about legal firearms. To the point now, your own minister is running like a little child to hand over legal firearm that you donate to the police that you just got a year ago. The chickens coming home to roost. It was the same senior hierarchy of the government that kept harassing me and frustrating me to get firearms for them and their friends in the rich and famous. But when I decided to give firearms to the small farmer, to the small businessman, to the police constable, to the prison officer to protect themselves, you have a problem. And 130,000 people voted for that. Gary, I need to ask you this. I mean, without you having to dive too much into your strategy as you're preparing for the general election, if given the opportunity today, what would be the first thing you would deal with? I mean, looking at this crime, many people, and not just myself, many people who are watching now are simply at the mercy of these criminals. You have senior citizens who no longer want to leave their home because they are now deemed soft targets. Easy. You have one video where a, a, a couple is sitting down, actually talking to each other, making out, and while they do, someone leans over and is robbing them of their valuables. A home invasion, I mean, it, it's an everyday thing now. It seems that the criminals are just sitting down and mapping out. They know where the retirees are. They know the people who are most vulnerable. They know who doesn't have a lock on their gate, who doesn't have a dog. And they simply just plan out their attacks on a daily basis. If given the opportunity, let's say tomorrow, what would be the first thing you would deal with? Well, if I say given the opportunity, you mean if I was in a position of yeah. authority? Yes, if you were. It was simple. To replug, reboot, reignite the 130, 140 odd policies that the PNM and the police hierarchy shut down. Those were the things that pegged back criminals. Those were the things that would have been there in 2018 that caused public trust and confidence in the police to move from 14 to 55 percent. Now it's back down to probably less than 10 because, not because of the officers, but because of the hierarchy, the technology, the units, the systems, the collaboration, the ways to improve morale, to lift. Um, to, to motivate the officers, to get the public to believe in them, to find avenues for the public to give information to us, to find avenues to, um, to peg back criminals, to have a rapid response, to have a high visibility, to have a heavy deterrent. Those things could be done. Unfortunately, Kamala Prasad, the assessor, and myself, we both offered our services to Keith Rowley, not as the political leader of the PNM, but as the prime minister, by virtually saying, look, you're, you're a failure as a, as a chair of the National Security Council. Your minister of national security doesn't even know his role and function. He said it is not his role to provide policies. Your commissioner of police who pays 20 seconds in all the people who applied for commissioner and deputy commissioner in 2018, who got 20% less than myself in 2021. But then after, you, you get a president who broke the law to, to hire new persons in the police service commission, one is a financial consultant and one is a speaking consultant who have no knowledge in law enforcement, put us number one. So this has been imposed upon us. And we offered our services to this man and he said, no, in local parliament, he said, virtually, I don't care if the nation is um, drowns in blood. I do not want your help because you're not a, you're not a PNM. And that says so much about the man. And to the 138,000 of you who made that vote, 
think about that when general election comes. So the only that we could have, we could reboot this thing within months because it pegged back the criminals. There was a sense of order. They knew that if you jump a wall, because there was there was would have been one or two home invasions when I was commissioner. As soon as they jumped that wall in fairways, by the time they jumped out, we had three squad cars and we apprehended them. The criminals did not know. The few a few moments later was not a joke. It was technology. It was predictive policing. We knew what was happening. It was the first time in history that persons would be kidnapping individuals and we would be raiding the place whilst the kidnappers were there with the victims and arrested the kidnappers. The kidnappers didn't know what was happening before me and after me. It is usual. Well, pay the kidnappers and hope that you can get your family member free. We pegged it back. The criminals felt it. They knew it. They, they, the country felt safer. The only way that could ever take place is when the PNM is removed, when Kamala Prasad Sessa has that position in the National Security Council with myself. We made an excellent team. So it was that Gary Griffith thing. She was able to understand policies, procedures, work with the commissioner. I was able to implement policies to have the commissioner operationalize it. And then when I became the commissioner, I knew how to operationalize those policies myself. So to Trinidad and Tobago, you want a safer place, you want the country to be secure. When you look at, at prosperity for a country, it could only take place if safety and security is there. Without safety and security, there's not going to be investment. People are going to be reluctant to go anywhere to spend anything. They're going, they're going to be um, locked up in their houses. So if you want to make a decision to save Trinidad and Tobago, the only thing you can and should do is to remove the PNM come general election. Yeah. Let me just ask you before we wrap up so um, you can expand on it. NTA believes that every vote must be earned. And, yeah, and, and, that, and that has to do with the foolish, ridiculous comment by the PNM beating Philip Alexander, trying to allude to the fact that, well, the 16,000 votes that he had taken were UNC votes. I mean, this man is drink, drinks goatish soup. So you're trying to tell me that you went to the poll to know that everybody who voted for the NTA was a UNC supporter? The answer is no. And in fact, the, 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 when it is you do the maths, the NTA, when it is we have out of 51 seats, we got 16,000 odd votes. That's 500 per seat. Had we gone for all 141, that would be 70,000 votes. 70,000 votes and a 50% turnout. If it was a general election, which is 60%, 70 multiplied by 2 is what? 140. Guess how many votes the Congress of the people got? 140. So the stupidity of trying to undermine the value of the NTA, it is stupid because the same two seats that the UNC had in David Martin for um, La Puerta, Goodwood, and also Bagatel, they lost those seats by less than 200 votes. The PEP got 200, so they did their job to ensure UNC did not get those two seats. And those were two seats that the UNC lost by in 2019 by over 800 votes. There were several other seats that the UNC would have, that the PNM would have won by over 1,000 votes, such as Lupino, La, um, Lupino, La Florissa, and other seats in Diego Martin, and Woodbrook and St. James. And the, and the NT was able to cut that down to less than 200. We turned seats that, the, that would be the safest seats for the PNM in the 2019 local government election to marginal seats. And then likewise, it is because of the support of the NTA, it is not by chance that the UNC were able to win a, a, an extra seat in Arima, win an extra seat in San Grande, win extra, an extra seat in San Fernando, and because and also turn four seats into the Puna that they would have lost by several hundred votes to less than a hundred or so. It shows that working with that state constituency, joining with the UNC as an alliance, it is going to spell annihilation for the PNM. So for anybody to handpick and say, well, that's a UNC vote or an NTA vote, it shows your ignorance at the highest level. But as I said, the, the PP seems to have been assigned as the PNM B team. Go in there, you know you're useless, you know nobody likes you all, but get 50 or 70 people to vote for you in a seat, and if you win my 20 votes, you would have done your job. So I hope that those 5,000 people who would have made the most ridiculous decision to vote for a dead party, the, like PP, I hope you would have realized what you did. You allowed the PNM to win three or four extra seats that they should not have. All right, Gary, I want to thank you so much for taking time out. It's been a pleasure as always, and we, of course, will be talking very, very soon again. Thank you so much.